What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. As you can see from behind me, today we're going to be making more progress on my Mark II Escort. Now if you're new here, I purchased this Escort over two years ago now and a lot has changed. It was originally left-hand drive and I've completely changed it to right-hand drive. I've also stripped the underneath and put my own lovely coating on. I've also stripped the underseal from the insides of the cab, yes, there was underseal inside the vehicle and I've also sprayed that up. I've done loads of other bits and bobs, but now we are on the rebuild stage and in the last video, I started to put some of my suspension on the Escort and it is looking so good. And today we're gonna to be carrying on that theme because I've ordered some more parts. So let's have a look what I've got to fit next. I've got a new parcel that has arrived. I've already opened it just to check the content Contents. Now in my last video I was unsure on what to go with brake wise. I said should I stay standard or should I upgrade? I also asked a question on Instagram and loads of you guys recommended a Willwood kit. So this is actually from GS Escorts. They do the whole kit so I've got the calipers, the discs, the pads and this was at a very very reasonable price. Literally so many of you guys recommended this I would be silly not to have gone for it. So as you can see, we've got some lovely four-pot Willwood calipers. Look at them. Honestly, I am just, yeah, oh, I'm very, very excited. As I say, as well as the two calipers in the kit, it also comes with the brake pads and the discs. Look at these, drilled and grooved. I, uh, I've never actually owned a car with drilled and grooved discs, so yeah, I'm very excited to get these fitted. But I do really need to give a shout out to everyone who recommended this kit. There was so many of you, so thank you very much. Without you guys, I wouldn't know what sort of route or what part to choose for the brakes, whether to stick standard or upgrade, and if I was to upgrade, there were so many different options, so you guys made it much easier for me to decide. But just before we fit that brake kit, I have got the small task of fitting the bearings to my alloy hubs. So I showcased these in the last video. These are from Burton Power. Now I was gonna put the bearings in that end, but I didn't get round to it in the last video. So what I've done already is I've fitted the bearing races. Now I had loads of comments actually on how to fit these. So thank you very much guys. Everyone was saying to put the hubs in the oven and then put the races in the freezer. And because it will cause the hubs to expand slightly and so the races to sort of shrink up ever so slightly, we're talking like like a foul, it would then allow me to slot them in easily. But there were some other options to say to press them in. Now I do have a hydraulic press at my work. So what I've done today after work, I just pressed in these races and they went in really easily. Uh, I mean, when you've got a hydraulic press to hand, it's, it's very easy to press these in. So yeah, they are now ready to go. And what I'm gonna be doing first is getting the bearings fitted. Now usually, I'd just be going around this with finger and thumb, trying to press in the grease, but this time round, I've got a special tool. Now this has been lent to me by Scott. He's uh, very local to me, and he's got a Mark I Escort, a lovely Mark I Escort, and he recommended to use this, so I've borrowed this off of him, but I will be purchasing one in the future. Now I didn't actually know this tool existed, but. It is an absolute lifesaver. So it's on the end of my grease gun here. And basically what it does is it clamps the roller bearing into position. As you can see, these two plastic cups come together and it's got a thread on it. So I will just do that up now. And now it's on the grease gun. All I've got to do is simply pump the grease into the bearing. And basically this just forces the grease into the bearing and it will pack it for you. As you can see there, the grease is just starting to come out. There we go, so we're just starting to see the grease now. This is gonna get nicely packed out. And as you can see, it's just now coming out by the roller bearings. It's being forced all the way through that bearing. Sorry, it's a bit shaky. I'm pumping the grease gun at the same time. Now it is a bit messy. I've just removed the top bit of plastic. As you can see, all of that grease has been forced up into the bearing and it is completely packed out. Much easier than doing it by your hands. Look, that's all 
nice and compacted and in there now I have used high temperature lithium grease which is in the gun so yeah I know it's a bit messy but that is one packed bearing and all that's left to do now is to put my bearing in make sure it's sitting in there nicely I'll add a tiny bit of extra grease but I'm not going to go overboard because I've learnt my lesson from beforehand <laughs> I've packed these with grease with a lot of grease before and then I've busted the wheel bearings not long down the road so yeah we don't want to put too much in there as you can see that's all pretty much done now all that's left to do with this back bearing if I can get this bit of paper off my hands is to put this grease seal on it this will just stop any excess grease coming out of the hub there is the hub and the seal is now completely on it really is as simple as that I'm very happy that I was given the opportunity to borrow this tool because it just saves packing these bearings out with grease as I say normally you'd finger and thumb it but instead you can just plonk it in there put the top part on and then pump it full of grease as you can see just starting to come out of them rollers there to see it I know it's hard when I shake but when I stay still look at that I've gone ahead and I've done the other hub so we've now got both of the bearings fitted to the back of the hubs and the grease seals. I've just left the smaller bearings over there. They're both completely packed with grease but I'm not going to put them on yet because they'll just end up falling out the front of the hubs. Now what I'm going to move on to next is fitting these wheel studs. So these hubs don't have any threads in them for wheel bolts to go into, so you've got to knock some wheel studs into them. Now these were one of the only new items that actually came with the Escort. The previous owner had already fitted these studs to the rear. So basically these just slide through there and then we've got to tap them home. I'm hoping that these studs are as easy as they look to install. So what I've got, just two bits of wood, balance it in there. Slot the first stud in there and I'm just going to give that a good whack with a hammer. Well, that was very easy to install them wheel studs. Literally just tap them in and as we can see, they're all fitted and in there now. Next up, we're going to be fitting the discs onto the hubs. Now, as I said at the start of the video, these are drilled and grooved. Look at that. Very nice. Cool. Take a look at them bad boys. Sweet as. So these discs just go over the top of the hubs and bolt onto them like that. Now, I did actually have to purchase some different bolts. Now, these are from Rally Design Limited. Now, these bolts are the ones that are suited to fit onto the alloy hubs because I did try and fit the original bolts to these hubs and they're a different thread. So, yeah, these are the bolts for the alloy hubs. And I've also, in the kit, got little retaining clips. I'm not quite sure the technical term, but, yeah, basically, you put these on, put the bolts for them, and then once the bolts are tight, you just bash over the ends. Nice belts and braces, old school method. I'm also going to be putting a little bit of Loctite on the bolts. I'm not quite sure if people would recommend doing this or not, but considering it's a brake component, I don't want them coming loose. So I'm going to put a little bit on every bolt as well. Right, so I've just tapped over all of them tabs. As you can see, they're all done now. They were a little bit tricky, to be fair. What I'd done is I used my screwdriver to peel them up, and then I used a punch or a drift, and I just tapped them flush with the bolts. So yeah, they're all now completely done, and that is how the hubs are looking. Look at that, 
quality. So I need to do the other one and then we will get to fitting the calipers and all of the other bits. I've just fitted the disc to the other hub and I've just separated them. This one is for the near side, so we're gonna be focusing on this one. Now, here is my new brake calipers. It comes with this mounting bracket, also comes with all of the hardware and some more hardware there. But most importantly, it comes with the four pot Willwood caliper Look at that. Oh, it's definitely worth the money. Look at that. I've never fitted like performance calipers or anything on my vehicles before. I've always just removed and refitted or matched it like for like. I've never upgraded brakes. So yeah, this is yeah mega, proper, proper cool. The first piece we're going to be fitting is this bracket. It basically allows us to bolt our bigger caliper up. Now this just goes through the original holes on our coilover. As I say, it comes with the hardware as well. As I just bolt it up, it should go in. There we go, it's starting to go now. So I will make sure these are nipped up nice and tight. I've got this bracket on. I think I'm going to have to take off the tape from the spindle because the disc now needs to go on before we put the caliper on. So yeah, I'm going to remove this and then we'll get the disc and the bearing and the hub all slotted on. Oi, look at that. Yes, look at that. It's finally starting to come together. So now time to fit this beautiful Willwood caliper. Now, I have got some more hardware for this. It's got two bolts and two hefty washers. Now, the hefty washers go on first and then the caliper and then the bolts go through them. Basically goes on like this. So you've got the bolt there and then the big washer at the top. There she goes. I'll just do the bottom one now. Oh wow, this is really, really starting to come together now. Right, so what I'm gonna do next, before I get carried away, I'm gonna fit this bear in because the disc and the hub is still wobbling around like anything. Now I have fitted this already, it's very, very, very tight, so it just needs the ever so slightest bit of persuasion. It does not need anything more than a tiny little tap. And that is it, home. <laughs> oh dear, I am so buzzing. This is sick. Yes, right, so now I need to work out whether I've got the right washers or the wrong washers because I think you can get RS2000 washers, I think, or they might be the same. So what I've got here is my original washers. If I just give them a little clean up, there you go. I think, yeah, I think they still work. Yeah, they should still work. They fit flush around the thread. And then what I will do is obviously put one of my new nuts on. Right, so I've now got that locking nut fitted and it's gone on perfectly. I'm not gonna tighten it up or do anything like that just yet. I'm unsure whether the washer behind it is the correct size, so hopefully you guys can let me know whether I need to get a bigger one, um, an RS washer, maybe, just because it doesn't cover the whole bearing and I didn't know if it needed to. But I just wanna draw your attention to my caliper because I think I might have made a little boo-boo so I'm just looking at this caliper, and the main reason why I sort of paid a bit more attention to it is because when I spin the disc, it's not catching, but it's very, very close down there to the caliper and the disc. So on this side, I can fit my finger in there and it wibbles about, I've got loads of room, but in this side, I can't even get my finger in. Now I think 
the spacers or the washers that I used for the bracket, I think they're meant to go on before the bracket and then the bracket and then the bolts. I've made that sound really confusing, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna whack off the caliper and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Now with that caliper removed, you can see the bracket and the washers that I'm talking about. I think they need to go on before the bracket. So what I'm gonna do, swap it round, put the caliper back on and see if that makes any difference. Okay, so I really do think I sussed that fairly early on and I'm very happy that I've now changed around the washers on that bracket. Well, I'm gonna call them spacers because they're sort of spacing out the bracket slightly. And as we can see now, there's a much more even gap either sides, as you can see. And down here, the disc and caliper don't touch at all. And there's a nice couple of mil either side. So I'm very, very happy now. And I think that is going to be the correct way that they're fitted. Yeah, I'm really happy with that now. Now, last but certainly not least, I've got my brake pads to fit. Now, these are actually quite diddy take a look at them so yeah very very easy to install these i'm going to put a tiniest bit of copper grease on either side where it meets the caliper they just slot in like that and i'll show you how they are secured in a minute all right there's a tiniest smidge of copper grease on them I'm just going to slide them in and they don't need to go all the way in just sort of flush and then it's very very easy I've got this little contraption just slots through the caliper and then slots through the holes on the brake pads if I just bring one back out again it's slotting through them holes so yeah it's very very simple just push that one in a bit more there we go and it just clips over there and that's it job jobbed now I may have mentioned this a couple of times before, but I don't have a lot of room over here on the off sides of the Mark II Escort. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fit up the hub, the caliper and everything that I've done to the near sides, but I'm just gonna do it 10 times faster for you guys because you've already seen it before and I'm gonna be struggling putting everything on because it is a bit cramped in here. So anyway, I'll catch up with you guys once this side is completed as well. So now both sides are complete and they've got all the hubs, the discs, the brake calipers and everything on. I've now got a little bit of a treat for you guys. So I've moved over most of the bits and bobs to the right hand side of the garage and I've got something to show you. It's a bit congested down here now, but there's good reason for that. I'm going to show you these wheels that I picked up recently. So these are some normal Escort steels that have been banded to 7J. Now these were done by Zach. Uh, from Zoo Speed, so I know that the banding is going to be top quality and they are 7J wide. So I saw a bloke advertise these at a reasonable price. I thought I'd grab them. I'm not 100% decided whether these are the banded steels I'm going to be running on the Escort, but yeah, let's whack them on. I think you guys can all guess what I'm going for. We want to get the Escort rolling out of the garage at the end of this video, so let's get these steels on if I can. Yes, there we go. Now they're not in the best condition. They got a bit of surface rust. They're currently just in primer, but I'm not too fussed about that. The price wasn't too dear for them, but I thought I'd pick them up regardless and I can decide whether I'm 100% on them in a couple more months time. Right, let's get the other wheel on and get the Escort back on the floor. It's been a long time coming, this has, a long time coming. Just gonna try and fit the other wheel, but I really don't have a lot of room in here, so. There we go. This is actually so crazy to see wheels on my Mark Escort again. It just looks so fresh. Look at that, yes, quality. Right, let's get off these little axle stands and see if we can roll my Mark II Escort out of the garage for the first time in quite a while. Right, that's the first one out. Watch the paintwork, that's what we got the cardboard there for. Literally, the moment of truth. Hopefully it's not gonna be too low. I think it is gonna be. I'll have to put some more actual stands under because I'm not gonna be able to get these blocks of wood out. So after quite a lot of juggling about, swapping bits of wood around, I've got 
less blocks of wood on the jack now and a couple under the front wheels. I've adjusted the coilovers a little bit as well, just so it, it's not sitting on the complete floor. Hopefully, this is gonna be a success. Yes, it is. Starting to win. Yeah, boy. All right, we'll change that lock. We'll just go straight on now. Hopefully that's somewhat straight now. Is that straight? Yeah, that'll do. There's like no clearance on the floor at all. <laughs> Well, this is quite the high to end this video on. I've given the Escort a little dust down because this side was very hard to access and it still had loads of dust on it, but yeah, it's out in the fresh air, having a little breather. I've got the steels on. I did have to adjust the coilovers all the way up because it was too low. Um, but yeah, now I've got a reasonable height. You can get a couple of fingers in between the arch and the tires, but yeah. Isn't that looking good? I've also put the banded steels on the rear now as well. But one thing I was thinking about was the width of the rear wheels. I think they really need to be 8J or maybe seven and a half. So yeah, as I say, I only bought these wheels just as sort of a mock-up purpose. I didn't 100% know if I'd be running them on the Escort, but yeah, it's great to see them on it nonetheless. But as I say, it's just really refreshing to get the Escort out of the garage because it hasn't seen daylight in quite a while. I'm really happy that the suspension and brakes are nearly all done. They need nipping up, bleeding through, but the main bulk of it is all bolted on. It really is great to get the Escort out of the garage. It kind of refreshes my mind of what it actually looks like on four wheels. And yeah, I'm even more excited to get it on the road this summer. In the next video, I'm gonna be tackling rebuilding my brake tower and my brake servo that I've got here. Now I can't remember what order the springs and the seals go into it. So if anyone's got a picture of the order, then please either send me a message on Facebook or Instagram. I'd really, really appreciate that. I'm sure I'll work it out somehow, but a picture would be very useful. And also I'm going to be fitting all the copper brake lines. So yeah, if you guys have got some tips or tricks for making them, then please leave it in the comment section below. Oh yeah, and also so if anyone's got a picture of where the brake lines actually run on a Mark II Escort, that would be really helpful to get a couple as well because then I just know where I need to run my brake lines. But anyway, what a successful video. I'm so happy with my new brakes. They just look the part and yeah, I've just been staring at them for a good couple of days since I fitted them. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a like. And if you like what you see, subscribe to the channel to see more. Thank you all for watching and until the next one, I'll see you guys later.